What's up everyone? Welcome back to Arizona Tourist Compound. So today we'll be walking you around the Sulcata tourist enclosures, showing you some of their habitats and maybe debunking a few myths about their species and uh, getting into a little bit of detail about these guys. Let's go. All right, Sulcata tortoises, the most personable tortoise species in the world. These guys are the third largest tortoise species in the world right underneath the Galapagos and the Aldabra tortoises. Those guys are island tortoises. The sulcatas are a land species. So they're actually the largest land species of tortoise. Let's hop over this wall real quick. All right. So our setups are a little bit different than most people's of just keeping one or two tortoises as pets. This is kind of a larger program that we've got going on uh we've got about 15 sulcata enclosures we keep 15 animals per enclosure so we don't have overcrowding this enclosure here actually has 30 animals just because it's quite a bit larger and then keep in mind this is uh the first floor they've got a basement that they all live in so this enclosure here has probably nine different burrows and then most of the burrows actually split into two different directions, if not three. So they've got some more room to uh, separate from each other. You can see they're all lined up against the brick wall or pretty close to it, trying to stay warm or soaking that heat before they head, head back home. These black culverts, if you uh, use them on the side of the road for construction, Sometimes you can get some scrap pieces, but you cut those right in half. It makes excellent tunnels for them to get into and stay warm. Shade structures are always good for them in the middle of summers here in Arizona. So Salcata tortoises' main diets should be grasses and haze. Um, their intestines are actually reversed from ours as far as size. Um, they're actually set up to be able to consume the dried grasses and the haze and actually get more nutrients out of them than most other animals. All right, let's head out of that enclosure and I'll show you a few more. Sulcata tortoises are a perfect desert dwelling species with their light colored shells. They're able to stay nice and cool during the summer. They enjoy throwing mud or dirt on top of their shells to stay cool. It's kind of a cooler day today, so right now they're not flipping mud onto the back of their shells. So not all sulcata tortoises will dig burrows and live underground. If you provide them with a secured structure, such as a doghouse or a shed, they'll actually reside in there in the evening time and uh, feel safe and content. You can apply additional heat for the winter time to keep them warm. And make sure the doors are able to be shut and keep them secured in there. These guys are a non-hibernating species. Some unique individuals will actually burmate. They won't uh, be active for a couple months during the winter months. And they'll come out of their burrows like they haven't missed a beat. We do provide concrete water holes for the sulcata tortoises. We just put a thin layer of waterproof mortar over the rim of it to keep the water sealed in. And the easier way of providing a water hole for them is just filling up a depression in the soil. This way they're able to get in there, take a drink, and soak if they need to, and then the water absorbs into the ground, obviously. It's cleaner that way. So one myth or fallacy about the sulcata tortoises are that they're a solitary animal and they can't be housed with others. They actually do just fine solitary or in pairs or in groups. There's a certain hierarchy and the, usually the largest one in the group is the, the top dog and then it falls in suit from there. The second largest is the second ranking and it just keeps going down. The females learn to stay out of the male's way when they come walking by with a certain look in their eye. Only time when it becomes trouble is if there's two adult males about the same size, same weight, and they just can't establish who the dominant one is. 
And then at that time, they might need to be separated. If they're raised together as hatchlings, they seem to do a lot better uh, as far as the dynamics of adjusting of who's the more dominant one. And these two additional enclosures over here to the right are the ivories and the albinos. We'll get into those guys in another video. a little bit of the sulcata tortoises here at arizona tortoise compound hope you enjoyed the video and until next time take care